City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, and time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Hello, everybody. Hello, welcome back. Today I am going to be making one more dress for my daughter Jessica, and this is one that she actually requested of me a long time ago. But I wanted to make that other dress that I did, that sheath dress a couple weeks back, uh, to get an idea of fitting. So now that I have an idea of how a standard size fits her and everything, I feel a lot more confident going ahead with it. So what I'm going to be doing is, in this McCall's pattern, and I know it looks fabulous because of it basically has this little wraparound skirt that you just tie on, but it is a really nice sheath dress okay just ignore the the extra skirt for a minute um, you might be able to see better here this is what I am going to be making but I'm going to be making a few little stylistic changes um, first of all well let me just turn the camera down and I'll show you the dress that she sent me the photo of and then I'll show you why I'm going to change it okay so I have to leave my phone on the table otherwise my camera freaks out trying to focus on it so if you can see it's a sheath dress it looks like it's buttoning up the front okay it's got a little belt it has a couple belt loops on there um, very fairly long it comes below knee level it has let's click on this one a little bit of an opening there it looks like it has darts going up the front and down into the skirt. When you look at the back of it, it also to me looks like it has darts in the back of the bodice and in the skirt. Okay, so the problem is going to be that I am going to be eventually making this dress out of this fabulous tweed, my Linton tweed that I've been sitting on for a while and doing all of those buttons out of this fabric would be a nightmare because it's gonna you know it's it's a very loosely woven fabric they would all in order to make it work they would all have to be bound buttonholes by hand and everything it would be a nightmare and I'm just not that confident in it so what I'm going to be doing is just like this pattern has um, a side zipper is what actually is going to allow her to get in and out of it. I will put the buttons up the front with a little slight overlap look just so it looks like it gives the impression of buttoning up the front but you don't have to worry about the strain of buttons pulling when you're sitting down or something and I don't have to worry about all those buttonholes. I will also be changing the neckline because as you can see here it's a nice squared off neckline. This is not so I'm going to be uh, dropping this neckline into more of a square shape like that okay and then the back um, needs to get higher so I'm going to raise the back up like this okay so with these two changes in neckline um, putting buttons down the front up to this point after that point it'll be open and so what that's going to mean is cutting these two the front pieces instead of cutting it on a fold I'm going to cut two separate pieces and I'm going to extend that front center front area about an inch and a half so I have enough room to do this overlap here um, 
and and one more thing in the back I am going to be putting a little a little kick uh, slit in the back there so with all of that I will be making a mock-up of this before I cut into this just to make sure everything is great I'm just going to use a cotton home deck because it's nice and soft and everything like that and I have it on hand so that will be my mock-up and maybe she'll like to wear it who knows so um, this is my project I'm going to go ahead and open up my pattern and get all of the pieces cut out for view A so when I look at view A, um, view A also includes the big skirt. Obviously, I'm not doing that, so I'm just going to omit all of this. They do have a long, narrow piece. Their piece nine, which is the waistband piece that that big skirt is attached to. I might go ahead and cut that out and just use that as the little tie belt piece. Um, if it's not long enough, I can always add length to it. But I'm going to be uh, cutting out these over here. Pieces uh, five and six are skirt pieces. And one and two are the bodice pieces. Three and four look like facings. They are. And because I'm going to be modifying the bodice necklines, I'm also going to need to modify the facing necklines. So I'm just going to cut them out roughly and roughly and show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is adjust the length of my skirt. I need to end up with a finished length of 23 and a half inches. So what I need to do is measure that five eighths of an inch down. I'm going to start measuring it down to here. Put a little mark at my 23 and a half. And let's see here. This calls for a two and a half inch hem. So I'm going to add one, two, wait a second, one, two and a half. 26 inches is where I need to finish it off then. So I'm going to need to shorten this by nine inches. Well, you know what? Because of the way they do the, um, wait a second, because of the way they do the back, um, I am just going to cut it off the bottom. I think that that's going to be the easiest. And I'll show you when we get to the back. This is the front piece because it's, it's unusual. There is a slit on this dress, but um, it's kind of unusual the way they're going to do it. So I am just lining up where I'm going to cut it, get out my ruler, and I am just going to cut straight across. It's a fairly straight skirt so I think that that's going to be fine. So let me go ahead and trim this. So that is my skirt front. Now for my skirt back I want to show you the way that they're going to do this back slit is the slit is basically the entire length. They This is the center back stitching line so they're having you cut it really really wide all the way down do a stitching line way in and then fold the whole thing over it's kind of interesting but if I try to shorten nine inches this way it's going to move the top of the slit way up to right underneath her bum and nobody needs that so instead I'm just gonna again cut it off the bottom so let's see here just to make sure everything matches up well. Matching up those notches here. Can you even see that off camera? No, you cannot. Okay, there's a couple notches here. I'm going to come all the way down, put a little line where I need to trim it off. Get my ruler. Draw that line in. And that's going to be the modification for my skirt. And you can see I still have about a six inch kick pleat or kick slit or kick, yeah, kick pleat I guess would be extension. They're just calling it extension, whatever. This part is done. Let me go ahead and get my bodice front piece and my bodice front facing up here. 
Okay, so I am lining up my center front along my grid. Put a weight on there just to hold it. Get my pencil over here. This is my front piece. I want my arm, my shoulder to stay the same. So I'm going to follow the line down a little bit. Okay, and when I get down here, I don't want it super deep, but I want it squared off enough that it's kind of stylish and comfortable. So I'm thinking right about here should be good because if this is the apex, it's way far away from there. If she bends over, we're still classy and everything. So I think that that's going to be good because if you figure this is the, my new cutting line, the stitching line is going to be 5, 8, 7 inch in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. There's my new neckline, and now I'm going to cut out this piece according to her size all the way around. Okay, so this is my front facing. So I am just going to lay this with my cutting line matching up to the right size here. And that looks pretty good. Put my weight on there. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the neckline for this. Now, if you can see, the neckline comes from here all the way over. So I actually need to bring this much lower. So if this facing in general is one, two, almost three inches wide, from this point, I need to lower it. So that means I need to tape another little piece of paper here. Okay, so let me get my Sharpie because it looks like I'm going to need to draw over a piece of tape here. So I'm just going to trace where the edge of my cut line is for my bodice piece. Okay, and this is my center. It says center on fold. Remember, I'm going to need to extend it because I'm making that mock button opening. So I'm kind of leaving that rough just as a reminder for me. So let me pull this piece off here now. So if I trim my neckline in, okay, I need to Remember, this is where this goes. Hang on one sec. I'm going to go ahead and draw my center front on here just so I have it to look at. So with my weights in place, I can see it underneath there. I have my little facing on top. I'm just going to draw that line on so I can trim it off. All right. So now I can go ahead and trim down the front where that center front line is going to be. I'm going to trim a whole bunch of stuff off of there. Don't worry. Trim over here. Okay. Now what I need to do is the line for my size is the second one in. Okay. And I need it to be at least a couple inches below this point. I'm going to say two and a half inches. So two and a half inches down. Drawing over tape again. So I'm going to use my Sharpie. Okay, I have that. And I'm just going to kind of continue that until I can smooth it in. So at this point I can try to smooth it in over here. I think I'll bring it up a little more over there. That looks nice, you know, kind of artistic. So I'm going to trim straight across ish in a swoopy kind of way. Okay, so now this is going to be my front facing. And I just realized I'm lining. I am lining the finished garment. So I'll be using this facing for my mock-up because I'm not going to line my mock-up. Um, but for my final 
it's not going to have a facing because it's going to be fully lined and I'm going to use that as my edge. So, you know, there you go. Let me go ahead and get my back piece over here and I will show you how I'm going to change the back, which should be a lot easier because I'm just going to be raising it. So I need to tape another piece of tissue paper in here. And lay it down so my center back or center on fold line is on my grid. Let me move you over so you can see. My pen just rolled off the table as you do. Okay, so I'm going to extend this center back line all the way up and across my my tissue paper there. And now for the back, don't want it nearly that low. Um, the cut line for my size is right here. If this is on up here, I'm going to want it down about two inches. So I'm going to start and what it basically did is where the top of my shoulder is, if I take it straight across, it's about a, a quarter inch down here. I want my neckline to be a couple inches lower than that just for comfort. That's why I chose to start it here. And I am just going to kind of guide it down so it matches that. Okay. That way, you know, it's classy. It'll work. I'm just going to trim here because this whole thing is going to be cut on a fold. And kind of like I did with the front, I'm just going to make the back match here, which means, you know, taping a little place back on into the facing. And understanding I'm only using the facing for the mock-up, so that's not a big deal. So if you're going to be lining it, um, you know, you have a couple options. You can use the facing or not. And I will probably be videoing both ways because I'm going to show you first how to make it unlined. Send that off to her and then later on when she gets a chance to try it on and send me a note on how it fits, um, I will do the real one out of the, the tweed and send that to her. So. Anyhow, and that is my pattern. And I just wanted to show you, um, I'm changing the shape of this back one. I'm giving myself about three inches. Now it will make it four inches at the top. And then swooping in down here. Okay, I don't need all of this stuff down below. So I can just trim it off like that and up here yes totally changing the shape but that's okay you just make your facing fit how it needs to for the outside okay so that is now my back facing which is going to go right up here so I am cutting out my skirt front and I am I made a note on my tissue to add an inch and a half. So I'm lining up my ruler at the inch and a half mark and just drawing with my heat erasable pen down the front here. And that's going to be my new cutting line that is going to give me room for my mock um, center front opening. It basically will be, I'm going to make it as if I have a center front opening. Um, I'm just going to sew it closed most of the way and not make buttonholes, but just sew my buttons on. So that's how I take care of that. Now for the center front piece of my bodice, I'm going to be doing the same thing where I just add an inch and a half to the center front. And last but not least, I am adding the one and a half inches to my center front facing. And after this, I'm just going to cut a strip of fabric across, you know, probably about four inches wide. 
and that is going to be the belt, you know, because it's a belt, it doesn't have to be precise. And that is going to be it for cutting everything out. I'm going to call that a day for right now because I got a lot of other things I got to run and take care of. And next time when I come back, we're going to get started putting this dress together. Good morning and welcome to the next day. So we're going to get started putting this together now. The first thing I'm going to be doing is putting a whole bunch of marks onto my bodice front piece here. So let me get a couple things out of the way. I am going to be using my heat erasable pen, my little scrap of leather, and my hole puncher, as usual. Um, and I'm going to actually mark this center front. Now this piece was originally cut on a fold, so the center front is this line. I'm going to be marking that line because I want my center fronts to overlap. Um, but I have the extra because I'm going to be, let's see if I can do this here, having it a little bit larger so I can make it look like I have a button lap on there. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, on this line, and I'll mark one side and then the other. I'm just going to put a little line at the top and the bottom of that center front so I can draw it in. So I can just place my ruler here. And that looks about right. This is actually my right side, which is fine for marking my center front, but I'm going to need to mark all of my darts on the wrong side, so I'll be flipping it over. Just to let you know, I'm going to go ahead and punch out all of my little circles that go along with my size. So as usual, I stick my leather underneath the tissue paper, but on top of the fabric so I don't damage my fabric. And punch out my circles. And then I can just reach through and draw these in. So um, since I can't do that right now because I have it on the wrong side of the fabric, I will in just one moment. So I have a dart down here. I also have a dart on this side. Um, and what I'm contemplating is when I'm making my final garment, I might ease this in instead of making it as a dart because it's a little more of a couture kind of technique. But for my mock-up for this garment, I think it's going to be fine just sewing that in. So let me go ahead and punch out these holes. This little dot here is going to be marking the top of my zipper opening, so that's important for me. That'll be on the inside also. I will be clipping my notches. This triangle up here that you cannot see, this one, that is marking the shoulder, the top of the shoulder, so I'll go ahead and mark that too on the wrong side. So, again, I am marking my center front line on the right side, everything else on the wrong side. So on my right side now that I, I mean on my wrong side, now that I have drawn these uh, dots through, I am going to go ahead and play dot to dot here and connect them. This one on the bottom is not a straight, it's more of a curve, so I'm just kind of doing one little section at a time, like so. This just gives me a better line to follow when I'm sewing my darts in. Now this one, the side dart, it is very straight because it's just two lines. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that like so. Okay, um, I am going to go ahead and serge all the way around my pieces after I put my darts in. And this also does want to fray a lot. Usually I just clip my notches, okay? Um, but because of the nature of this fabric, I think that my notches would disappear if I clip them and then serge them. You know, on a really tightly woven fabric, you can see them clearly through the serging. This one, I'm a little iffy on, and it might. But what I'm thinking is after I make, make my darts serge around, then I'll come back and just with a pin mark my 
mark my notches or clip them at that point, probably mark them with my pen. So this is what I'm looking at first. Um, my next step is to go ahead and fold up to sew these darts. So what I'm do is at the bottom dot, stick a pin straight down and up and then grab a couple other pins here handy. At the tip, I'm going to fold that, push these two together. Okay, so it's straight down. This fabric's fairly thick, so I want to make sure that it is straight. That's going to give me the fold line I need. So I can put my needle here. Now, on a thin fabric, it's no big deal. On a thicker one, sometimes if you just turn it, it actually skews the fabric a little bit with the top one over slightly. So I want to make sure that does not happen. If you're using a really thick fabric and it looks like it's going to, instead of just turning the, the pin, sometimes I just go ahead and stick it in all the way sideways. You know, it's a minor thing, but it helps save your sanity. So when I sew these, I'm going to sew it from the outside edge coming in. Uh, for these, I will probably back stitch it because it's a thicker fabric. It's not going to be a big deal. Um, and let me pin this the same way and get that dart sewed in. I want to introduce you to today's machine. This is Bella Blue. She is a 1894 new home sewing machine. I love her. Did her not too long ago. And so she is set up on my treadle base. And she's a straight stitch machine, but she's really cool. This is the tension up here. Um, it comes down. She does have a shuttle, you know, that works well. A little shuttle winder and everything. So she's fabulous. She's going to be our seamstress today. Okay, so like I said, for my darts, I started the outside edge. Um, I did do my version of back stitching, which is basically I take a few stitches, lift her up, move her back and then continue forward because these sweet old girls do not have a reverse. I can just follow the line that I drew and I can see right here is the very tip of that line. And I'm just going to go off the edge. Okay, I will tie that knot after. Now on this machine, this is kind of funny, um, it does not have a tension release when you lift up the lever. So what they want you to do is actually pull a little loop of thread off and then use that as your extra. Um, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a tail because I want to be able to tie a little loose knot here. Stick a pin through that loop. See if you can see. I'm going to stick a pin through that loop and then stick the pin at the very tip of my dart. Pull on the thread and that is going to cinch that knot down at the very end of my dart. Right there. And just trim it off about half an inch or so. Okay, so that is the first dart down here. I'm going to do the exact same method for these over here. Okay, now that I have my darts sewn in, I need to press them before I serge. And the side dart gets pressed down and the center darts here get pressed towards the center. So over here on my ironing board, what I do is first I press my dart flat. And I'm giving it some steam, hoping it does not fog up my camera here. Once it is pressed flat, then I'll go ahead and press it in the appropriate direction. But that helps everything just lie so much better. So this is my side dart here, so it is going down. And I can press it from the outside this way. Okay. So now, once I press this one, I'll go ahead and just serge the edges, but that's going to hold it in place nicely. All right, I want to show you, in case you haven't seen before, what I mean by serging around everything. So on 
this garment we have an inside corner an outside corner so I'm just going to demonstrate how I turn it basically I am serging it so that I have just the little the little scruffy edge coming off okay so if you can see I'm I'm basically just taking off dust here all right so what I'm going to do for an outside corner is run it until my needles just pass the edge okay so my needles are past the edge I lift them up lift up the presser foot turn the garment and set it back down and then continue okay now for an inside corner like this I'm going to open it up as flat as possible and just go straight over it like that until another outside corner take my needles just past the edge and flip it so this one I've already done and um, you can see doing it this way you're not taking any bulk off but I'm able to get nice sharp corners um, it's not adjusting the size of the fabric at all okay and that way it's not going to fray I can press seams open and everything like that so that is what I mean when I'm say I'm going to surge all the way around it oh look at that sunshine coming through my window there you can tell it is morning what time is it 7 50. Well, sun's coming up later i guess i don't know we live in a valley so by the time the sun just barely rises over our hill it's later in the day in the winter time we don't get the sunshine until like 10 a.m it's kind of nuts but anyhow this is my right side um i ironed my piece so my line here kind of disappeared but I know exactly what it is because it's an inch and a half because that is what I added so I can redraw that I'm just gonna get my ruler on here okay so there's my center line now I like I said I did not clip my notches before so I'm just going to go ahead place my pattern piece on here and draw them on and this is pretty much probably how I'm going to operate for most of the uh, pattern just because it seems like for this fabric it's not it's it's going to want to fray too much but I can see those little marks you know I got my double here I've got a single here got a single here I can see that pretty well so that's how I'm going to work it so when I surged it I surged over um, here's my folded dart here I was able to surge over it so that dart is now a single layer this way okay that's why I surge after I make my darts so now I need to get my my back piece I was going to say my facings but don't want to get ahead of myself I'm going to go ahead and get my back piece my back piece has a dart also so we will be doing very similar techniques okay so this is my back piece now you can see it also has the dart and so I'm ignoring this whole thing here because that's my old neckline I'm ignoring this dot because I don't need it that was from the old neckline um, I'm going to be punching out these dots again this is for the left side only but I'll mark it on both um, do the same thing where I make my dart first press it and then surge around it and I will be right back okay so I've got my front and back darts put into my main pieces and I was just quickly trying to strategize things and I realized I made a big mistake so here's the thing um, since I have it opening in the front even though I'm going to be sewing it together so technically it won't be open I have to make it like I'm opening it in the front and so on my front facing piece I just have it coming straight across the top what I need to do is actually cut it so that it has a wide strip coming all the way down and for what I've got right now 
this is my front facing piece. So I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut a couple long strips of fabric and just join them to this facing piece so that, you know, I'll just connect it because it'll be fine for what I'm doing here. Um, looking at the instructions, they want you to go ahead and make the facing, you know, put all of the bodice together and then do the skirt. But because I'm going to have to sew this all the way down, I am going to go ahead and make my skirt first and then attach my skirt to the appropriate top piece and um, then put the facing on because otherwise I will have nothing to sew that long strip to once I get down to the skirt area. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and set my bodice pieces aside and get my skirt pieces out. All right, so starting with my skirt front, I have two darts. So of course, I will be marking my darts on the wrong side of my fabric, you know, marking them with my usual methods. And um, there, this dot over here, which you cannot see, this dot is marking the bottom placement for the side zipper. I'm actually, um, I'm probably not going to mark that right now. I will mark that afterwards. I'm going to do the same thing where I put in my darts, press my darts, and it looks like the darts get pressed towards the center front, okay? So I will be putting in my darts, pressing my darts towards the center front, surging all the way around it, and then I'm going to come back and put in this dot and my notches. I'm starting to really like this fabric. It's very soft and it's this gold. It's this magnificent gold. At first I was like, oh, it's yellow, but once you iron it, it shimmers. It's beautiful. So this could actually be a really nice dress. Um, but these are my skirt fronts. Originally the pattern calls for it to be cut on a fold, but I cut it in two separate pieces with an extra inch and a half going down the center front, okay? So I'm gonna take my bodice pieces that I've already made and putting them right sides together, go ahead and attach these at the top here. I'm going to sew them at a standard 5 8 inch seam allowance, okay? On both of the tops. All right, so now that this seam is sewed on, I'm going to press it towards the bodice, okay? So first I'm gonna press it flat to set everything in nicely, and then lift it up and press the whole thing towards the bodice. I'm gonna do the same thing to the back. Um, this is the right side here, the front, um, where I make the skirt. There's darts in the back of the skirt, and then attach it at five eight seven inch and then press the seam allowance in the back up too. Okay, so I just grabbed my back piece and I completely forgot it has this weird and wacky kick pleat thing going on in the back. So I'm gonna do it a little differently. What I'm gonna do is mark and make my dart first. And then this is two different pieces and then surge completely around both of the pieces. The, after I press the darts. The darts get pressed towards the center back, okay? So they'll be getting pressed this way towards the center back. So those are going to be my steps next. Now for the uh, darts and the skirt, there's two darts right next to each other. And what I'm doing is just pinning one and sewing one and then doing the next one. Because if I try to pin both of them at once, they're going to be very close. I'm going to have pins overlapping each other. It'll just, you know, not be good for me. So that's my process. Do one. Once that is sewn, then move my pins over and do the next one. Okay, so I need to do some marking now. This is my center, the straight area here, all right? And that is where this stitching line here is going to run off. There we go. I just needed to straighten that out. Oh, and I need to show you. I press on back of my skirt back. This one I did it right. This one I pressed my seam allowances towards the outside instead of the inside, but then I surged it, so I'm not going to undo that. I don't think anyone else will notice or care ever, 
but you know if you see it yes I did press these towards the wrong side anyhow all right so on this there is a dot where the slit is going to be open to I am going to mark where that dot is right here okay now this is one two three about three and an eighth inches from the outside edge. We're going to call it three-ish. So I'm just going to make a mark up here at about three inches in. Again, about that point down. I'm going to cut that mark where my slit starts sideways so I can see it. And here. So I can go ahead and just draw this line in this way. This is a, a stitching line that we're going to stitch up to this point, okay? And I really should read ahead in the instructions to see how this is supposed to work out. So let me grab that. All right, so I'm gonna do this in a couple separate steps, just one at a time. The first thing I'm going to do is just stitch this stitch line up to this point here that I marked that had the circle on the, the um, pattern piece. Once I get this row of stitching done, I'm going to press it really quickly just to make sure it's all flattened out. And then what they want you to do is run a second row of stitching, I believe from this dot also, all the way up. So I'm gonna have two rows of stitching. Okay, so now I have my two rows of stitching. I don't know if you can see, there's one here, one there. Down at the bottom, I have this much of a uh, opening. And what they want you to do is clip your tail. Um, this is at 5 eighths of an inch where it is. I'm going to go ahead and press both of these sides flat because I'm going to be making a narrow hem with them. But I think it'll be easier to get started if I just press that first. All right, so now that they're pressed flat, I need to make a narrow hem. So let me see here. It's kind of weird to fold it, but I'm just going to tuck the serged edge underneath and pin it and I'm going to uh, use my machine and just edge stitch right along my fold over here and it said when you get up towards the top taper into nothing okay well what I'm going to do is just fold it so I have it hemmed up to the point where this dot is and then I'm going to clip it because they don't say to clip it, but for a fabric as thick as mine is to go from a rolled in hem to just out flat, I think that that's gonna work out fine. So up here, I'm gonna clip it a quarter inch in. Okay, just that far. And that way when I turn this under at the very top, it's gonna look like that, okay? Okay, so I have it hemmed up down here. And what I need to do now is you basically take this massive seam allowance, fold it over to the side indicated on the diagram here, and I need to press it so that this is gonna become one very long wide kick pleat. And up here at the top, at about half an inch in. I'm just going to run a row of stitching up there just to hold it in place so it does not want to move anywhere. Um, it lines up with the very top so that is good. So actually I'm going to run this row of stitching first I think and then I'm going to press it and down here at the bottom it just gets pressed over also just like that all the way down. All right, so this is what it looks like. I thought I had it matched up exactly when I was laying it out, but apparently my bottom layer was off a bit. So, you know, I got that, but again, not stressing, not stressing at all. So now I need to go ahead and sew my um, bodice top. 
of my back on here. So putting right sides together. Just going to match this up. Sew it at 5 eighths of an inch and then press this seam allowance up towards the bodice. Okay, so I want to show you what I have here. Um, let's see if I can get her close enough. The neckline is not what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be more squared and then straight down. So I need to change the direction of all of this. So what I'm going to do is I pretty much have it pinned so that where the seam line for the shoulder is going to be is where it should be, kind of. And from this point here, I'm just going to draw a straight line down to where this is meeting and then extend that line straight over. And I think if I make this my new line, that's going to be a lot closer to what I, I want, what I intended from the inspiration photo. So I'm going to make this change on here. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this, use this piece to transfer over here to draw around it to make sure it stays exactly the same. And then I need to make this change on my pattern piece also so that it can carry over onto my future garment. So just wanted to point that out. The back looks like it's going to be fine. I don't see a problem with that at all. It's just the front that I got the shape a little bit wrong, but that's why we make a mock-up. Okay, so I got it trimmed out. I fixed it on the pattern. So now my uh, pattern piece and my facing reflect the same neckline. And now that I've zoomed the camera out, hopefully you can see I've got a decent amount of length going here. I don't have my sides pinned, obviously, but I think that it's going to be, it's going to be pretty cute. Um, it is going to have a belt to tie around here. So, um, I'm hoping that all will go well. This is for my daughter. It's not for me. This dress form is my size, not her size. So it, this dress might not fit my dress form perfectly, but that's okay. It's, it's a tool. You know, we are going with it at this point. Um, so I am actually going to take a break for a moment. I got some other things to take care of, and I will be back this afternoon. Oh, to welcome finish back. Right. It's actually been a few days, probably about four days since I've worked on this dress because I was busy doing other things, but I'm ready to jump back into it. Now I wanted to point out that um, a few videos ago I was lamenting the fact that I have never seen a modern pattern in the last year or so use a regular zipper. They're all invisible zippers. This one uses a regular zipper, so I'm excited about that. I actually had an invisible one pulled out, tossed that back, got a standard zipper. Now, um, the zipper I'm using is a little bit darker than my fabric. I think that's okay. I'd rather have it a little more subdued than a little more bold because we're going to be putting in with a lapped zipper on the side. And the other thing is that my zipper is 18 inches long. The pattern calls for a 12 inch zipper, but to me, side zippers, and I'm actually wearing a dress that has a side zipper on it here, this, this lovely one. Um, the longer that side zipper is, the easier it is to get into. I've had some vintage garments in the past that have a very short side zipper and I just have a hard time pulling it over my head and everything. So, you know, I'm going to use my 18 inch zipper. You do you. That's what I'm doing. Um, and because I'm putting that front opening in, I'm doing everything slightly out of order from what the pattern is calling for. So since at this point I have my complete back with my bodice and skirt on it and my two fronts with bodice and skirt, I'm going to go ahead and put in the zipper now and then sew the other side seam complete so that all of that will be done. It's easier for me to put it on at this point before everything else is there. So I'm going to go ahead, get my pieces down here. Now you can put it on whichever side you're more comfortable with. You know, if you're right-handed, one side might be easier and left-handed, one side might be easier. Again, it's, it's your garment. You do what you want to do. So to me, when I, I'm right-handed, so to me, I kind of tug on the bottom. Here's my right hand. 
with the right hand and pull straight up with my left. I could do it that way too. This just feels a little easier to me just because I'm used to it. So that's probably what I'm gonna do for this garment. Okay, I wanna show you something. Um, this dot right here is supposed to be marking the top of the zipper, all right? But this line here is my dart line, and I, I delete, I erased it when I ironed it before, so that's why I'm showing you. If I line this up, so it's along my dart seam, this dot is right in the middle of all of this stuff that's folded down, and that's gonna be extremely difficult, in my opinion, to deal with. So I am going to move that down so that because this dart was pressed down okay I just don't want to end my zipper on top of all of that dart nonsense so I'm going to actually move this dot down until it's below it I would say by about half an inch and I think that that way I'm not going to have to deal with sewing through and all of that stuff with the zipper up there so with that being said, I've got my 18 inch zipper here and usually I'm doing these with an invisible zipper, but I'm so glad that I'm doing something different now. So I'm just going to be following along with their instructions here for putting in this zipper. So the first thing that they want you to do is whip stitch it closed at the top, just so that it's not going to want to open up, which is good. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, sew my garments together here, my front and my back. The first, I'm matching up this side where the bodice is sewn to the skirt. I'm matching that up first, okay? Because then, if one of these is slightly higher or slightly lower than the other, and it, they're actually matching up really well, that's easier to fix up here than having this mismatched um, across your zipper. You don't want that. Okay. So now this is my dot that I have placed below my dart. Okay. And I'm just going to put two pins there as a reminder to myself while I'm at my machine that that's where I want to stop. Now I'm going to pin it together again below here. Now I don't know why, but my skirt lengths are very different at the bottom. I'm just going to let that be. I can even that out when I am um, doing my final hem. But just to let you know, that is fine. But I start from here and smooth it out down and start from here and smooth it out up. Okay. Now I am using my longer 18 inch zipper that I have whip stitched closed at the top. And just for positioning, I'm going to place the top of my zipper where my dot is. Follow it all the way down and I can see that actually right about where this pen is, is where the bottom of the zipper is. So I'm going to go ahead and put two pins there as a reminder to myself that what I need to do is start sewing here and go the rest of the way down. All right. All right. Over here at my ironing board, I have it pressed open just above and just below. This is not pressed yet. So it's going to be lapped. So the back is going to be a little bit uh, less of a seam allowance than the front where the zipper is. And what the instructions are calling for is pressing it at a half inch seam allowance in the back. Okay, so down here where it joins, it's actually going to be pushed over about an eighth of an inch. So at this point, it's going to look like there's a little wrinkle. That's okay. This is their instructions, okay, to press it under this way. I want to do it a different way in my mind, but I'm thinking it would be a good idea to follow their instructions, so that is what I'm going to do. So, with my ruler here handy and keeping my front piece out of the way, I'm just going to carefully come in here and press this backside seam allowance. 
and I can kind of gauge it because I did serge it. I know about how much beyond the serging it takes to make a half inch, so that's why I can eyeball it pretty quickly. All right, so while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and pull my back out of the way, and on the front side, it is going to get pressed to the full 5 eighths of an inch. So this is going to be narrower on the back side than on the front side. So again, keep your ruler handy just to make sure. All right, so now back over here at my table with my dress face up. I'm going to keep my zipper closed and slide it under here. And I am going to be sewing it to the back side first, okay? I'm going to pop it up so that the little tab just barely fits inside the opening here. And yes, that is going to fit. Okay, so what I'm going to go get next is what I use for all of my zippers, my double-sided fusible basting tape, which is not in the place it usually is. Okay, here we go. So instead of using pins, this is my preferred method. Um, I am going to put it on the front here from just below the zipper pull to just above where the stopper ends. And clip my little tape off. It's got paper on the top here. Okay. All right, with that pressed on, I'm going to go ahead and pull the paper backing off of my tape. Okay, so now that that is off, I'm going to slide my zipper underneath here, face up, so my little stickiness is exposed. And again, just to, the first time was just to see if the zipper is going to fit well. This time I'm actually going to be sticky basting it on. So with my little tab at the very top of my opening, I'm placing the folded edge of my back, which remember is only at a half inch seam allowance. I'm placing that folded edge fairly close to, but not on top of the coils of my zipper. Okay. I want to have enough space that I can zip and unzip without fear of it catching in the fabric. So let me just continue to push that down all the way to the bottom. Okay. So now what I need to do is go ahead and stitch this and I'm going to be sewing a seam right about here, fairly close to the edge. I'm just holding it close to but not over my coils, okay? And again, this is the back side that we're working on right now. Okay, I'm over here using Pearl for my zipper because I do not have a narrower zipper foot for my new home machine, so I'll be on the lookout for one of those. But I want to show you this is my front. It is pressed at 5 eighths of an inch, so when I pull it straight down, it's going to completely cover that zipper. This is my back side, and so the way I'm going to stitch it is I'm just kind of lifting the front straight up out of the way. I'm going to slide this in here underneath my little narrow foot, and a couple stitches, a couple back, and take her right along the edge here. Where it gets to this point, I actually should have trimmed this ahead of time. I think it might be too late. Now, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pull this off. Pretend I did this ahead of time, okay? So underneath here, where I have all of this extra seam allowance and everything, I'm just going to come in and trim it off about a half inch square, okay? Just that little bit. 
so I just have a very small seam allowance at one point. That way it's going to lay a whole lot flatter. And the stitching that I'm going to be putting in will reinforce over it, so it should be plenty strong. Alright, so I'm just going to backtrack over part of what I just did. It will be fine. Trim this little thread off here. And now this is laying a whole lot flatter. So before I sew this other side, I'm actually going to cut that little square out of that seam allowance too. If you have a very thin fabric, you don't need to worry about this, but this fabric has some body to it. So, you know, we do what we need to do. And do I sew slowly? Yes, I do. I feel comfortable moving fairly slowly, a stitch a little bit at a time. Um, I find that I, I don't go off track as often that way. Okay, so down here at the bottom, you can see my opening is actually a little bit farther. This is the end of the stopper there. I'm just going to go on past the stopper and stitch to the end of the tape, back stitch, and call that good. All right. Here we go. Okay, so when you're all done, this is how the backside stitching should look on your zipper. All right, so I need to work on the front now. So first thing I'm going to do is get my tape and again put a row of tape on this exposed uh, right side of my zipper all the way from just below the pull tab to just above where the stopper is. Okay, so I've got my sticky tape on this side. I've pulled the paper off. The first thing I'm going to match up is actually this point here. I want to take my folded edge of my front piece and overlap it so it just crosses where my stitching line is that I just put in, okay? That's important to me. So now that I have this pressed down, I'm going to go ahead and pull my bottom layer nice and tight and place the edge again all the way down so it just covers that stitching line that I put in down at the bottom. Okay, and then making sure everything is laying flat on top, do the same. Pull this nice and tight. All right, so that is on there. Now, we're going to have to sew this with the whole thing closed. All right, so the, what I'm going to do is put a few pins in strategic places because I don't want this fold to try to tug open. I want it to stay closed. Um, but because I have it taped, I can tell exactly how things are going to lay and that's good. So I'm just putting a few pins down the way. Um, it's going through the tape on my zipper uh, in the bottom here. And up here. Now I'm going to be sewing it um, looking at the top and I'm actually going to get a little guideline drawn on here. I believe they're going to have you do it at 5 8 of an inch, which would make sense. You can kind of feel where the edge of your zipper tape is under here and you can feel where the coils are. So like for me, where my fingernails are, that's where my coils end and out here is where my tape ends and I want to sew somewhere in between. So if I measure that, it is at half an inch. So I'm just going to put my ruler, and again, this does erase, okay? Do a little end thing. And putting my ruler so that from the seam, or from that fold right here, I have a line half an inch out. Up, up, up. And right here is where it's going to end. I want to put a line straight across above where my little zipper flap is, okay? So I'm drawing that over. 
and up. Okay, so that's going to give me a guideline. For some reason it disappeared down here. That's going to give me a guideline of where to sew it. So, you know, put as many pins in as you think you need to. I tend to over pin, but it makes me happy. So I'm going to stick this in probably this way. So over and all the way up, trying to make sure that everything stays uh, right where it wants to be according to the tape, the basting tape that I have underneath. All right, so I have it sewn on and I went ahead and pressed it to erase all of my marks. So here it is, lovely side zipper. Moment of truth, does it zip? Yes, it does zip. Oops, didn't get all the way to the bottom there. It zips, it zips back up. That's what we need it to do. Um, if you look on the inside, I've got my two rows of stitching there um, up at the top. There's my whip stitching and I am crossing over and stitching it across with my yellow thread up there. So I think that that is pretty good. What I'm going to do is go ahead and get my other front piece and on this side, the side without the zipper, I'm just going to attach it here to a standard 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way down and then press that open. The next thing I'm going to work on is getting all my facings put together. And if you remember, I have my front facing here that I have corrected so it's the right neckline. But I do need to add a long strip to go all the way down the front, okay? Because I did not think about it when I was creating this. So if I was to cut it out again, it would come to this point and then head down. So to measure the size of that piece, because I am just going to sew it on here, just cut a separate one and sew it on, I take my measuring tape and place it so that the edge of my fabric is at an inch and a quarter, okay? because that will help me take into consideration all the seam allowances there. So holding that an inch and a quarter, I can come all the way down and see that to get to the bottom, I need to add a strip approximately 38 inches long. And I am going to make that strip, um, I'm going to be a little generous today. I think, no, I'm going to make it three inches wide. I think that that will be plenty. So I need to cut two strips, three inches wide, 38 inches long. Okay, so I am just taking a peek at this and I think that I have my dress and my facing bumped out too far. Remember I added an inch and a half beyond. The garment pattern was cut on a fold in the front. And so that means that this edge of the pattern would be my center front, all right? And I'm going to be putting buttons there. And if this is my button on the center front, I the most I'm gonna want that little lap to be is gonna be about 3 8 of an inch beyond that. Anything beyond that point, I think it's just gonna look too exaggerated and, and not clean. So from this point, if I add 5 8 of an inch, um, I have my piece is a quarter inch too wide. I could take it in a quarter inch, I could even take it in 3 8 of an inch and it would still be fine. So um, what I'm going to do is on my dress, I am just going to serge off the front edges a quarter inch, okay? I'm gonna change my little notations on here that we are adding one and a quarter inches instead of one and a half inches to um, extend it here. And this piece I am also going to take off my quarter inch right now in this simple manner there. Okay, so my battery's about to run out. Let me change the battery and go ahead and just take off that front quarter inch on both sides of my front. I have sewn my little strip onto my front facing here, okay? So I just put the edges together, sewed it at 5 8 7 inch. After I did that, I pressed the seam allowance open and went ahead and surged around the whole thing. But what I need to do is cut interfacing for my front facing and my back facing. And um, I just 
yeah, yeah. So I need to cut it from my front and my back facing. Um, what I'm going to be using is my typical lightweight interfacing, and I'm just going to press this down so I can use this entire edge here as my pattern piece for my front and my back. It's easy. It is uh, cut on a fold over here. So let me go get that interfacing. Okay, so that is it, my typical stuff. It is lightweight, this is a heavier weight. The reason I'm using a lightweight, very lightweight interfacing on a heavier weight fabric is I don't want to add any extra stiffness. Um, this is going to be, you know, going down the front that looks like a buttonhole thing. If I was using it actually as an opening, that these buttons were going to be functional, I would probably use a more substantial interfacing. But because they're going to, it's going to technically be sewed close, and you know we're not going to worry about that. I'm going to use the softer one because what I want my interfacing to do is to keep. See how this wants to just get all loose and everything. I want the interfacing to hold the threads secure. To hold them uniform. I don't want it to add a lot of extra bulk for this garment. So with that reasoning explained, I'm going to go ahead and cut uh, one out on a fold for here and two of these big long pieces. This has my 38 inch strip on the front and I'll be right back. I mean, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and fuse those on off camera. You've watched me fuse interfacing on enough times. You don't need to see that one more time and I'll be right back. Alrighty, I had to charge my microphone and camera batteries, but I think I am good now. So this is my back facing, interfaced, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and sew my front facing pieces to it, both at the top and at the underarm area here. So on both sides, I'm going to be sewing it at a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then press those seam allowances open. Ignore what I just said. I was over there sewing it on my lovely little treadle and remembered I'm not supposed to sew the top, the shoulder seams yet because otherwise I wouldn't be able to turn it right side out. So do the side seams, do the underarm seams, but not the shoulder ones yet. Okay. Okay. So what I have here is obviously right side up my dress. I'm going to go ahead and place my, my facing that I have sewed the bottom of these side seams to. And what I'm going to be doing is matching up starting at these side seams because that seems like a good idea to me right now. Um, I'm going to be matching it up all the way around and I'm going to sew it in segments. I want to leave the top of my shoulders open, okay? So what we're looking at here is the armhole. So I'm going to be sewing at 5 8 of an inch from here down and up, okay? This is my front over here. And so once I have it all matched up, Correctly, I will sew from here down over and down at 5 8 of an inch all the way to the bottom and at the back obviously the next step is going to be matching the back neck up and sewing at 5 8 of an inch here. Okay, so basically sewing the entire outside edge of the facing on but leaving it open at the top of all of the shoulders. Now right here my facing is not matching up you know picture perfect exact to the edge of my garment so I want to make sure that I have a really nice uh, seam line that I can use to you know compare apples to apples the next time I sew this. So I'm just going to be drawing a line here at 5 8 I think my pen's about to run out of ink here, at 5 8 from the edge of my, my garment fabric because it sticks out a little bit more. And what that's going to do is give me a really nice defined intersection down here where I need to make this turn because I want to make sure I have a nice sharp turn on both of my fronts. So I'm going to be drawing, drawing this line the same on both of them. 
right, so I've got it sewed up and I'm gonna need to understitch it, but I need to make some clips first. So over here on the front, there's my corner. I just clipped it to take some bulk out there. Where this corner is, clip it all the way to, but not through that stitching line. And when I was sewing it, when I turned the corner, I backstitched a couple. Well, like I do on my treadle, which means basically raising the presser foot, moving out the fabric and stitching it again, okay? Just to reinforce that nice corner so you don't get a catty cornerness. All right, um, under the armholes here, I'm looking for my larger scissors. I'm going to just take several little cuts through. Now, this is a thicker fabric and I don't want a whole lot of bulk. So on the facing side where there's a seam, I'm gonna go ahead and clip that out like that, okay? So the dress part, I didn't clip the interfaced facing part, I did clip. And also, if it was still feeling too thick, I think that what I might do is come back with my pinking shears and I'm just cutting the facing. I'm leaving this part long. And that way when I go to do my understitching, I have a lot of fabric for it to grab onto but it's not overly, overly thick. So let me go ahead, take some time, uh, pink off about half of the seam allowance of all of the facing pieces. Uh, it would actually be easier to do that in the curved places before you clip it. So this one I already clipped, but you know, for the other ones, I will pink it first and then come back and make my notches. And that'll get us ready to understitch. Okay, so now I have my facings all trimmed and prepared and I need to start understitching. And I'm gonna do my best to do all of them, but you know you can't usually go the entire way because your presser foot just won't fit. So, for example, this is my back facing. I want my seam allowances when I open this up to be underneath my facing pieces, okay? I'm gonna be stitching on this side of the seam, all right, as far as I can. And like for this, this particular piece, I just open it up as much as I can. And probably right about here is where I'm gonna be able to actually put my presser foot down and start. And I'll just sew along this side of this seam all the way until I can't go any further on this side, which will probably be right around here, okay? And that's fine, that's just fine. It doesn't have to be the entire way, just do the longest and best you can. The same thing for the underarms. Everything, all the seams, the seam allowance is out. Press the facing over on top of it. Stitch it on the facing side all the way that you can, okay? And for the front, the same. It's a little bit more tricky because we have this L shape here. Just do the best you can. If you can't do this part in here, then, then don't, it's okay. You'll, you'll survive, everyone will survive. The front part is important, so do the whole front opening if you're doing it my way. I need to iron this because this line here, that's my center front. And remember, that's where I'm gonna be putting my buttons. So I think that's gonna work out well. So let me go over. I'm still working my little Bella Butte blue sewing machine and I'm gonna start understitching. So when I get started, I'm actually just starting at a bottom right now because that's easy for me. Just take a couple stitches. The way I backstitch, I lift my presser foot, slide my fabric forward a bit, and then go over it. So I'm lining up the edge of this little toe of my presser foot with the seam.
Okay, and so that is going to give me a really nice little understitched edge there. And then I can just turn it easily like that. so the shoulders are just pinned together but I want you to see where she is right now how the neckline looks okay now again this is for my daughter it's not for me and this is my mock-up so we're working on sizing again when I send it to her and she tries it on so with all of that being said yes this is fairly snug I'm pulling it snug across the top here it is fairly snug around the waist not around the waist, around the hips. Um, there's not a lot of ease, but you do get an idea of how it's going to look, okay? I have the fronts, the fronts just pinned, overlapping at that center front area, which is, you know, about half an inch or five eighths of an inch in. And I think it's actually really cute. I think it's going to give the impression that I'm trying to get based on our inspiration photo. And so you can see the little kick pleat back here in the back, or maybe you can't, but trust me, it is down there. I like it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started on sewing together these shoulder seams up here now. I wanted to show you um, a closer view of my understitching. This is the back. And it's really important that you don't skip understitching because that's what's going to give you a really nice, clean, professional looking finish. What it's doing is where the understitching is, it is pulling all of that over to the inside so that from the outside you don't see any of that stitching. It makes, it makes pressing it a whole lot easier. But it just gives a really nice, secure, especially around curves, that facing edge. You really don't want to skip that. But with that being said, I came over here to start sewing these together and I realized um, I actually was supposed to stop my stitching at about 5 8 7 inch down. So I'm just going to pick out one, maybe two stitches at the top of each little shoulder here. Come on. So let me get this one pulled down. Okay, so on the facing side, you know I have it open about 5, 8, 7 inch. What I'm going to do is just tuck that under, okay? it under like so all right and I will probably press that too so it's going to look like this from the outside and I'm going to do that for all of my shoulder seams and this should be about five eighths of an inch here I actually decided not to press them because that gives me more flexibility to open things up and, you know, close things up without, seam, without creases. So what I've done is I've just tucked. This is the facing side here that I've tucked in. And I'm going to match up the uh, bodice side matching up the edges here and I'm going to be stitching it across as close to 5 8 as I can with all of this going on. Um, I'm trying to tuck this a little bit lower so it's out of harm's way. Okay so I have this sewn here and what I need to do now is press this seam allowance open kind of tuck it in on each side and then I'm going to pull up what may be a little bit lower there, which is my uh, seam allowance for my facing that's tucked under. And I'm just going to bring that up so it is at exactly the same level as 
that seam line. Come on now. Okay, so on this one, I have it on one side and the other. And if your facing looks like it's a little bit extra here, that's okay. A lot of times that happens because you've understitched it, which is going to make everything roll towards the inside, which is going to give you a little extra up there. That's okay. You're going to be hand stitching this, so you can just work it in. So I'm just going to pin that one in the middle just to hold it off, okay? And then do the same thing with this one so that they match together. So, you know, this just fell open again, but pretend that they're still folded up so that they just meet. I'm going to get a needle and a matching thread and carefully close up the sides, whip stitch straight across, and make this nice and secure. Alright, so I've got these closed up. The inside is nice and clean. You know, it's kind of thick, but I don't think that that's going to make too much of a difference there. So all good with that. Now, this is, of course, my inspiration photo, and I wanted to double check which side goes over which side because I always mess that up, it seems. So I'm just going to set it like this. Now my center front was right about 5 eighths of an inch in, so I am just overlapping it so that they overlap by an inch and a quarter because 5 eighths plus 5 eighths is an inch and a quarter. Okay, so I'm going to match that up there down here at the waistband. Move my phone over. I'm going to do the same thing, making sure that this seam line is even, first of all. And I can feel underneath where that bottom is, so I can lap that, add an inch and a quarter also. Just going to put this through all of those thicknesses that way. Okay. Now, at the very bottom, it looks like it's open, oh, maybe about nine inches or so. Maybe a little more at the bottom. Can't really tell yet, so I'm going to go ahead and pin most of the way. I have not hemmed it yet, but I kind of wanted to pin it together. And actually, I'm going to stitch it together, you know, as far down as I'm going to, um, before I hem it just looked and look if I place it like that that matches up perfectly I might do that anyway sorry I got distracted but look doesn't that match perfectly right there how cool is that okay but once I have it stitched to the point that I'm going to want it to be stitched to then if I hem the bottom it'll be a lot easier to make sure that both layers are hemmed to the exact same place because remember when I was putting this together one is slightly lower here slightly lower there and everything because I'm going to have to to even it up some so with that being said I this is the edge here which is probably about an inch and a half but I think that that is close enough that I'm going to pin it there because being able to have perfectly matched patterns going straight up the front I think is a win. At least down here. It doesn't work out that way on the bodice, but on the skirt I think that's cool. So let me get this pinned here and uh, then I'll show you how I'm going to sew it together. Okay, so now that I have it pinned all the way down, what I'm going to do is at about a quarter inch in on this side because remember I want this to look like it opens but it won't actually open but I'm going to go ahead and run a row of stitching from the very top all the way down to this pin right here okay because I want it to be able to open a little bit while she's taking steps down there at the bottom but this is where I'm going to put my last decorative button so at this point my stitching will end that's going to hold it together once I have that done then I can fold this back and continue the stitching along here so it will look like the stitching continues the rest of the way down okay that's the illusion I'm going for I actually ended up stitching it closer to 3 8 7 inch than a quarter, sometimes even blending over to 
almost half an inch because my fabric was so thick that it just wanted to sew there instead and uh, I let it you know I just let it so my inspiration photo has it looks like there's a button underneath that tie so I would say four buttons on the top and then whatever spacing that is I will continue them down but they're they're fairly close together so I got my little buttonhole guide this little guy here you know there is a link in the description if you're looking for one um, I'm gonna place the top button I would say about 5 8 7 inch down and the bottom one here and that's about the width the most that I can spread this out if you're ever wanting to do this and you want your buttons spaced out even more you can compress it and then just place your buttons at every other marker you know but I think that this is going to work out so if I place my first button right around here and I want Yeah, I want to place my button just above where all of this thickness is because this is a, this is a very thick spot right here because I have a lot of seam allowances and I have a very fat button too. So I'm going to place it just a little bit higher. So if I put a button here, 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 and here, then if I continue that same spacing down, From here, I will have a button here, 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 here. Okay, so that's going to give me several buttons. Um, I'm just going to take a few minutes with a needle and thread and go ahead and stitch them on all the way down the front. Okay, I've got it pretty much sewed together. Now I have this dress up on my spare mannequin which is not a dress form it's just like a pinnable mannequin that is not even close to my size or her size but I wanted to put it onto something that would not bind because my dress forms are I have more volume in other areas that she does not so it would wouldn't um, give me a nice true length to work on so that's why I have it on her um, but if you remember I had spots that were uneven down here at the bottom and I need to even that up so I am using my uh, vintage hem gauge here so what I'm doing is I'm moving it down on these things up here at the very top of this clappy part it's like a zigzaggy shaped clappy part um, there is a little hole that is a straight pin goes through. I am lining up that position to about a half inch above where the shortest part of my fabric is. And I think this is it. I think it is. I'm going to tighten it up here and turn her around and just make sure because what I want to do first is just even everything out nope it looks like my front and I have not stitched this part down on the front I'll do that after I get done hemming okay so it looks like I need to raise her up a little bit if I can come on skirt marker put it up and I think that's pretty close ignore the noise here okay so what I'm going to do is uh, just stick straight pins through because I want to be able to trim straight across and mark everything so uh, let me start with the front so you can see it easier I am just clapping this over it stick a straight pin through there okay move my I'm going to be actually turning her body because I don't want to have to crawl all over go to the next spot clap it shut put a straight pin through and so on and so forth until I have a little line of pins probably about five or six inches apart all the way around the bottom once I have that, 
then I can take it off, put it up on my table, and trim it nice and even, and work on the hem. So at this point here on my table, you can see all these little straight pins here. I am just going to start trimming straight across, kind of connecting pin to pin. And hopefully this will be somewhat level by the time I get done. All right, so I trimmed it off and then I went ahead and serged the edge because I'm just going to do a very simple hem on this. Um, because again, this is kind of a mock-up, but it's turning into a beautiful dress, actually. But what I'm going to do is um, just make a one-inch hem. So I'm going to flip my front facing to the outside, okay? Again, making sure that where it's curved under for my understitching, that it's still curved under this way. And stick a pin here to hold it. And I'm going to do the same thing for both of my front facings. It's just come up here and add a one inch seam allowance. I'm just going to stitch straight across right here. So I'll do that on both sides. Okay, so now that this is stitched down here, I'm actually going to do a little bit of trimming in this corner to take some of that bulk out. I'm going to trim this front piece the front facing piece, I should say, down a little bit. Okay, turn this right side out. Carefully pull out that bottom corner. And uh, once I get this pressed, that's going to give me a really good place to start my hem. So my, my little front opening is going to be nice and nice and clean. So now that that is done though, I can continue my stitching from this point, just pull all this other side out of the way, and stitch this all the way down to the end here, because I think that'll give more of the impression that this is a meant to be buttoned thing, you know? It's kind of optional at this point, but that's what I'm going to do. Um, but I will probably stitch that after I get done uh, pressing up my hem all the way around. So this is turned up one inch. I'm going to go ahead, fold up, and press all the way around my little hem up one inch. Okay, so at this point I just have it pinned, pressed and pinned, and I am going to stitch this hem uh, by hand just because I can do it a little bit more invisibly than on a machine. And I'm not doing anything really fancy to stitch this, just basically little running stitches where I only catch a thread or so from the right side and I space them out about an eighth of an inch on the wrong side. So it looks about like that. And then I can pull it through, but on the right side it's, you know, virtually invisible. So that's what I am doing all the way across the bottom. All right, so with that hemming done, the last thing I need to do is make the little belt. Um, this is going to be a tie belt, and I just cut a strip going straight across my fabric. And since it's a home deck fabric, it is about 54 inches long. So this isn't going to be a super long belt for her, but it will be enough that uh, she can get the idea and she can tell me if she wants the next one to be longer or the same size or things like that. So I'm just folding it in half. This is just a strip. How long did I? Looks like it's about a five inch wide strip. Okay, so I'm folding it in half and I'm going to sew it um, at a five eighths inch seam allowance. I'm actually going to serge this, I think. I think, I think, because I, I want to be able to turn it easily. So I'm going to serge it at 5 eighths of an inch, up one side, down, and then use my loop turner and turn it right side out afterwards. So now that it's sewn, I'm just getting the rounded end of my loop turner. Push the whole thing over there. It's very long and bulky, so we'll see. This will be a good test here. Okay, I can barely fit it on there, but I can. So now I'm going to take the end over here, pinch it together, and start to turn it by pulling over onto the other side. Yeah. 
and just slowly work my way around. It's actually not that slowly. It goes pretty quickly on this one. Okay, I think I'm about to the end. So if I can see that little nub there, then I'm good. So I can push it open, hanging on to that little nub because I don't want to lose it. Okay, I'm going to hold on to that and then pull everything right side out. So let me take this over to my ironing board and press it open nice and flat. Okay, so now that it is pressed nice and flat, I'm just going to tuck the end under like so. And I'm going to pin that. I'm just going to go over to my sewing machine and uh, make an edge stitch. Well, probably closer to maybe about an eighth of an inch in all the way around just to hold this so it'll stay nice and flat. And while I'm doing that, I'll close up this edge. it done. I've got my package all packed up and ready to send to my daughter in Arizona. Trying to hold all kinds of things here. So I know that the dress I made according to this pattern does not look anything like this pattern. But if anything it the video was kind of an explanation on how when I'm trying to make a garment look ex a certain way what I do is just find a pattern that is pretty close to the structural elements of what I want and then make minor changes from there to me that's a whole lot easier than starting from scratch and drafting a pattern from scratch for me you know everybody has their own strengths and for some people it's a lot easier just to, to completely draft a new one this is my preferred method so I hope you liked it. Whenever I hear back from her and I know how it's going to fit her, then the next time I make this dress, um, of course it will be the same dress with whatever sizing modifications I need to make, but I'm going to be using the Linton Tweed. It will be fully lined. It will be more, not extreme couture, but more handmade couture type techniques in that garment than this one so we'll see how that goes talk to you later hope you liked it see you next time au revoir then time to move them out again. Red barge green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life.